Hi everyone, this is a joint work with Mutu and Morvice, and it's about the price of active security in cryptographic protocols. Secure multi-party computation is a tool that allows a set of parties to directly communicate while obtaining the same security guarantees as when given an access to a trusted party that computes the function. Specifically, any adversary that corrupts a subset of parties cannot learn anything beyond the output of the computation. Security is proven in the presence of two central types of attackers. A passive adversary, which is a benign attacker that follows the protocol's instructions while trying to violate privacy. Whereas the strongest and most realistic attack scenario is an active adversary that can follow an arbitrary attack strategy. Another aspect, aspect of defining uh, security is the number of corrupted parties. In the odds majority setting, the adversary may corrupt less than half of the parties. Whereas in the dishonest majority setting, all parties but one may be corrupted. Working in this model has the advantage that the party does not need to trust anyone but itself. In this talk, I will, will be focusing on the most challenging setting, that is the active dishonest majority setting. By now, we know that MPC is very useful and has many important applications, such as private electronic voting and auctions, privacy preserving data mining, protecting cryptographic keys, and more. A common paradigm in designing MPC protocols is to first design a protocol with passive security and then amplify its security to the active system. The focus of this talk will be regarding understanding the overhead of amplifying passive to active security, where specifically we will care about the cost of the communication complexity. The theoretical goal would be to design compilers that introduce essentially no cost for the active setting, keeping the same asymptotic efficiency as the underlying passive protocol. Whereas in practice, this goal is translated into a very small constant overhead, as small as two. To frame a clean theoretical question, uh, we focus on designing modular protocols in which the ex um, computationally expensive cryptographic component is separated from the rest of the protocol and abstracted as an ideal functionality. Specifically, the cryptographic abstraction we consider in this work is a constant round protocol for computing distributed multiplication. This abstraction allows to capture many settings simultaneously. More specifically, we abstract uh, distributed multiplication as, F -mult, as an f mode functionality that is parameterized by a secret sharing scheme S over some field F that takes two shares of two secret inputs and produces the shares of their product. For simplicity, I'm going to use the additive secret sharing notation for the rest of the talk. Given the previous discussion, I can now phrase our motivating question as follows. Can actively secure protocols over an arbitrary field match the complexity of passively secure implementations given only black box access to F mode. In the dishonest and honest majority settings and with an arbitrary number of parties. Let's overview the state of the art uh, solutions in this domain. Recall that we measure the communication complexity overhead of achieving active over passive security. This is calculated by the number of calls to f mode per multiplication gate. In the two-party setting, this has been achieved theoretically 
where in a recent work joined with Yuval, Antonio, and Mutu, we show how to reduce this constant into two over large fields using MPC and the hat techniques. In the Boolean category with an arbitrary number of queries, current best multiplicative overhead over GMW is polylogarithmic in the circuit size and in statistical parameter S, where the overhead over passive Yau is order of um, S over log C due to using cotton juice. In the arithmetic category, with an arbitrary number of parties, current techniques achieve constant communication overhead over GMW in the OLE hybrid for sufficiently large fields. Given the state of the art, our main result shows a compiler that makes a constant number of calls to any passive implementations of FMOOT. In practice, this constant can be brought down to two for large fields. I will now explain about our techniques. It's easier to start by explaining the details of MPC in the head and the IPS compiler. So this is a powerful technique that was introduced more than a decade ago where the idea is that active MPC can be obtained by combi combining two simpler and much weaker components. Passive MPC with this honest majority, also denoted as uh, the inner protocol, and active MPC with honest majority, also denoted as the outer protocol or the virtual protocol. This approach broke barriers when it was introduced, achieving the best asymptotic complexity in this setting, but only for a small uh, number of parties. Moreover, while it achieves good asymptotic efficiency, its practicality has not been well understood. Extending this technique directly would not work, uh, as I'll show you next. And pushing the limits of the current bottlenecks requires considering a new approach. At a high level, the IPS compiler works as follows. Consider a two-party scenario. In the two parties P1 and P2, emulate an imaginary protocol with honest majority security while running a passive protocol. This honest majority protocol is carried out by a set of servers with no inputs to the computation. This means that the parties must jointly compute the inner computations performed by the servers. Taking a closer look, this implies that the parties maintain additive shares of the state of each server throughout the protocol emulation. Therefore, additive computations are performed locally well, multiplicative operations require communication and are performed by calling F mode. The main question is how to ensure that the parties emulated the server's computations correctly. Meaning, how do we lift the security of this passive inner protocol to the active settings? For that, IPS introduced a watch this mechanism a beautiful idea in which the parties constantly watch each other to enforce an honest behavior. This is implemented by using oblivious transfer, where each party chooses a subset of servers for which it learns the additive shares of the other parties, party, as well as its randomness used to run F mode. It can now verify that the computation with respect to this set of servers were performed correctly. One of the main bottlenecks in making IPS practical is related to the number of virtual servers and the watch list parameters. This raises the following question of whether we want to use this approach. Let me illustrate this more precisely. There is tension between 
the privacy and the correctness properties with respect to the number of servers set uh, for the outdoor protocol. Specifically, to ensure negligible soundness error in some statistical parameter S, we must set the number of servers to be order of N. On the other hand, the overall number of servers to be watched must be bounded by N over two. Otherwise, the privacy of the honest majority protocol will be violated. But given these restrictions, constant overhead is only possible for a constant number of parties. Therefore, instead of checking the parties' actions throughout the protocol execution, we suggest a new correctness mechanism that pushes this check towards the end of the execution, right before the parties reveal their output shares. Meaning we will have a single set of servers to be chosen and watched by all parties using a coin tossing protocol. However, there are several serious challenges when applying this approach. As an active adversary can easily break the passive security of the inner protocol and only get caught at the end. By that time, it will already violate the privacy of the honest parties and steal all their information. This is true even um, if we enhance the security of the inner protocol, since the adversary can deviate when emulating the actions of the servers in the outer protocol. In light of these challenges, how do we choose the inner protocol? The next observation is that um, the amount of work per party must be small. So keep in mind that prior instantiations for the outer protocol, such as the Damgard Ishai 06, will not work here since they use global operations such as degree reduction, that are expensive and, and costly when emulated by the inner protocol. In this work, we take a dual approach to IPS, where our uh, outdoor protocol is tailor-made, while using different instantiations of the inner protocol with different security guarantees and efficiency analysis. Towards introducing some technical details, I'll give a quick recap of Shamir's secret chain. To share a secret S, choose a random polynomial P of degree T, where the constant term equals S. Distribute N evaluations on the points one through N. Uh, with, these will be the shares. Then we have two useful security properties. Privacy, where up to T evaluations do not reveal anything about S and robustness where modifying up to n minus t over two uh, values does, does not affect the correctness of the secret reconstruction. One of the most influential ideas in scalable MPC is packed secret sharing, where instead of sharing a single secret, we share a block. This allows for uh, constant amortized overhead where many multiplications can be performed in parallel, similarly to SIMD operations in, in fully homomorphic encryption. On the other hand, we slightly lose on the parameters where the degree of the polynomials are increased by the block size. Okay, so let's start with a warm-up protocol that is based on the classic BJW protocol. Recall that this protocol follows by having the parties secret share their inputs using Shamir's scheme, then following the gate by gate paradigm, addition gates are computed locally due to the linearity of the Shamir scheme, whereas multiplication gates are computed locally but require communication to reduce the polynomial degree. In contrast, we will be working with two layers of shares, where the first layer could be Shamir's as in BGW, and the second layer will be additive secret chain. 
Consequently, multiplication operations would require communication, whereas operations such as degree reduction can be performed locally due to their linearity. Specifically, working with two layers of shares imply that um, the parties have a, sh uh, a share of a global view of the protocol execution. I will now describe the high level overview of our protocol. So in the first phase, the parties secret share their inputs using two layers of sharing. They start with Shamir secret sharing and then additively share each Shamir share. So the brackets notation refers to additive sharing. Next, the parties evaluate the circuit gate by gate. First, addition gates are computed locally by the parties. Note that the parties obtain the additive shares of the Shamir share that correspond to the output value of each addition gate. Next, multiplication gates require communication. So to compute the product of two Shamir shares, the parties communicate using F mode that allows to compute the cross products of the shares coming from the two input wires. Upon completing this multiplication phase, the parties have a global view of the Shamir shares of all the servers. And now they can run local degree reduction computation. The description I gave uh, didn't take care of malicious attacks, where at every phase in the computation, a corrupted party may disturb the computation. To combat with these attacks, we use tests that enforce correct behavior. These tests perform batch, uh, batched checks and their overhead is independent of the circuit size. So, so far it was a warm-up that corresponds to a variant of BGW. However, this does not give yet the complexity that we want. And in fact, this complexity is inflated with the statistical parameter S just in, in prior work. Specifically, the complexity is S times the passive overhead. And the reason is because we need to replicate every gate at least S times to get small statistical error, similarly to the analysis of cut and choose. To achieve constant communication overhead, we use packed secret sharing. Namely, the secrets are arranged in blocks and then shared. As I mentioned before, this technique played a central role in reducing the amortized communication complexity per party in large-scale NPC. And when using packing, the secrets must be rearranged between two layers according to the replication pattern of the computed circuit. So using um, pack Packing uh, enables to eliminate the factor of S in the communication complexity. And the reason is because now the overhead is amortized over a block of multiplications. As a final point, let me explain about the security required, uh, required for realizing F mode. Obviously, we want to, to weaken its security as much as possible as its effective efficiency. So we first observed that defensively private protocol is sufficient for our protocol as a security proof, uh, in security proof, the simulator can extract the adversary's input based on its defense, where a defense is as a so-called proof of correct behavior that includes the input and the randomness of the adversary. The second observation is that defensible pri uh, <coughs> privacy can be um, achieved by compiling a semi-honest protocol with a coin tossing protocol and forcing the parties to use that randomness. This is already shown in previous work. Um, what's new here is that we observe that we can uh, have a separate consistency check for the randomness used for generating random instances of F mode, such as random triples. 
And in contrast to prior work where all such instances must be correct, here we can tolerate up to k such errors, which will be caught with high probability by the consistency check in the online phase. I'll wrap up with uh, uh, several open problems. First and foremost, understanding the concrete uh, constant of small fields and AG codes. This is the major uh, open problem in, for uh, constant communication overhead. Second, can we push this approach to achieve better adaptively secure protocols by using adaptively secure FMOLT or maybe other features of FMOLT will give us other features in the overall compiler? Can we get constant round with constant overhead in the FOT hybrid? Our protocol achieves that only in the FOV hybrid. And finally, um, we need more compilers with different features. With that, I'll conclude. Thank you very much. <laughs>